Hey, are you ready to go? And who are you? I can't tell. Um, oh, hi. I, with these masks, they said if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Yeah. So if you're fully vaccinated. Well, we're around our kids, so we're not sure. Yeah, no, you do what you feel comfortable with, of course. Um, am I in you and everything? Did you want it? Did you test it to make sure it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. If it's reporting, okay, so I'll make sure. Okay, well, my name is Tony Veraldi. I'd like to welcome you here tonight. I'm the chairman of the committee to keep Bond Street open. Uh, we've been working on this since October, probably 25th or 26th, since we were notified by the City of Council Bluffs that there was interest in closing Bond Street, which many of us use every day. Um, as I look around the room, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six people, and plus our technician that's helping us record. Uh, this meeting was intended specifically for the advisory board members of the Council of Y and CA. Uh, we do have one member of the public here uh, that, uh, you know, that's more than welcome to be here, but we will probably have another forum in the future for the general public. We really wanted to meet specifically with the uh, advisory committee members. They can't talk because there's a legal challenge going on, uh, but they could listen. And so as I look around the room, there's is there anybody here from the YMCA? I don't believe so. Okay, I am sorry. This was a great opportunity to get together and just you know, listen. Um, so I guess I'm gonna start out uh, just by kind of saying where we've been, but then also some solutions. The thing is, it's not gonna do us any good to keep rehashing and rehashing and rehashing because we've been doing that for seven months. This is the end of May. Uh, it's almost seven months to the day when I received a letter from the uh, from the city that uh, the street was going to close or possibly close. Um, so I think tonight we really want to talk about solutions. Um, so in a, in the few emails that Leo McIntosh, who's the uh, executive director, for lack of a better title, vice president of the Council Bluffs Lake and Center YMCA, uh, the few emails that we exchanged. Um, he expressed some of the concerns that they had about keeping Bond Street open. Um, and so I went through the, uh, the list. Um, some of them were, one of the main ones was safety. Safety was a really big concern. And of course, everybody wants their kids to be safe. Everybody wants the adults to be safe. That's just it's common sense. So I understood part of what he was saying and other parts I didn't understand. but. I didn't know these kids are crossing over to Taco Bell from the YMCA campus. I'm at work all day. I, be, I live right across the street from the Y, but I don't pay that much attention, to be completely honest. So evidently the kids, instead of crossing at Canesville and Frank Street, they're leaving the YMCA campus and leaving where the drive, uh, where the driveway is, the entrance on Bond Street is. So leaving there and going across Canesville, across the busy street, and then there's a set of stairs there behind Jimmy John's that have been there for many, many years. So when I found this out, I'm like, okay, has anybody talked to anybody about closing the stairs? You know, this is a safety hazard. I don't know. Who owns the stairs? I don't know. Uh, I contacted my attorney. I said, you know, can I start asking questions? And he's like, Tony, let me do the legal work. You do your thing, fill prescriptions. Uh, let me do that. Uh, there were other questions I wanted to ask, uh, but he said we might get to that. It would make sense to me if I had kids crossing that street going up those stairs. The first thing I'd say is, are the stairs safe? They look safe, but there's a railing at the top that could, you probably looked at the railing. The railing could use some work. It's not, a, I don't know if it's a hazard. I wouldn't call it a hazard, but it could use some work. But has anybody addressed that? Who owns the stairs? Is it the city? Uh, I'm assured it's not the Department of Human Services who those stairs are right in the back or to the side and in the back. Is it Jimmy John's? I don't know. Jimmy John's hasn't been there that long. I mean, I don't. I really don't remember how many years, but there were other buildings there before Jimmy John's. So the kids are crossing up there and then they're going over to Taco Bell or Jimmy John's or China, Great Wall, you know, whatever. So it makes sense to me, and it would have made sense three years ago to address that. And maybe they did, and maybe somebody said, no, we can't touch those, they belong to John Smith, and John Smith said, no, that's, those are my stairs, they're gonna stay there. But it, it's an idea. The other thing I'd like to uh, 
When I was in uh, sixth grade and fifth grade, I was a patrol boy. So you see these uh, kids, if they're going to cross over at Canesville and Frank, that's a busy intersection. And uh, I believe if they get there and there's a red light, um, they're sitting there, they're standing there waiting to cross the street, they're still going to go down Canesville and cross those stairs. I, I just think that's how kids think. So I think it would be a good idea to post a patrol boy or a patrol girl at Canesville and Frank Street and put the, like a crossing guard type of thing. That's a busy intersection. I have, I take that intersection. Uh, I do, and it is a uh, it's a busy intersection. Uh, so I when I drive to work every morning, I come down Fifth Avenue, and I see this little kid, and he's walking to Bloomer every day. But, you know, Monday through Friday, of course. And I worry about that kid every day. I see him, and I think he gets to the corner of uh, Fifth Avenue and South 7th Street, where people are gonna get on that expressway, and I look at that kid, and I'm like, you know, it's kind of scary. It's kind of funny, when we went to the, tri the hearing the other day, it's the first time I actually walked by that kid, because I, had, I was walking into the building as he was walking to school. And I actually saw three people hit on the corner of Fifth Avenue and 7th Street. It was a truck that was uh, stopped. He was going east, and he was stopped at the red light, and a mom and the two kids were gonna cross over to Blue River. And um, at that time, there wasn't a safety guard, uh, crossing guard there. I, I don't know why, but at that day, there wasn't. And the guy was stopped, and what he did, uh, he, I think he saw the folks, but he, he got distracted and barely took his foot off that brake. And I think that truck went one mile an hour, if that, and it knocked those three people to the ground. And, you know, somebody could have gotten really hurt. So even a one mile per hour car accident is dangerous, hitting a kid. So obviously anything we can do. I think those crossing guards, I think you could pay a minimum wage. I think it would teach uh, responsibility and caring and uh, respect. Uh, the other thing I think it teaches is leadership. You could have, just like in the school systems, you, you, we had control, we had captains and so forth. And I think it builds leadership that has the older kids looking out for the younger kids. And uh, I'm all about leadership. Let's just say that. Everything I do, everything, I, every organization I belong to, um, we give out a scholarship every year that I coordinate. Uh, leadership is one of the biggest things that, that I look for when, as our committee selects a recipient. Um, and so I think no better way to build leadership than have kids, just like in school, helping other kids. It, it just kind of makes sense to me. Um, I don't know, uh, so, you know, pay a minimum wage, nothing much. Uh, maybe even fruit tacos, whatever. Um, we have a, a problem on our street with the park being there, if it gets built, and it sounds like it will, with kids crossing from Harmony, one side of Harmony Street over to the park. Um, Tom Boschka, who's going to be speaking here in a minute or two, he has grandkids that live on Harmony Street. Uh, actually, just off, up, up the hill uh, behind Harmony Street, to be completely honest. And those kids go to the Y, uh, I believe. And uh, so with the additional traffic on our street, we are very concerned about that. When Bond closes, the, the YMCA did a study. It was kind of a quasi-study, is what the city council called it. Um, there were 559 cars there in a 14 hour period, and I don't remember the date, but it was just a one time thing. But that was during COVID. Now COVID is getting much better. So those numbers are probably gonna go up. It would just kind of make sense. Um, you know, people, you know, I went out for a walk the other day. People are outside, people are doing things, thank goodness. So all that traffic is gonna come up on our street. There's gonna be one entrance our understanding, one entrance, one exit to the Y. So, and that's gonna be on Harmony Street. So that traffic is all gonna come up. Um, the other concern we have, uh, I'll, I'll go over some more concerns, but um, the, maybe now's a good time to do a little bit of a, where did I put that uh, pointer at? So I've got a few concerns, I actually have a couple of them. The other concern that we have I don't know if you're able to see this very well, but um, here's Canesville, here's Harmony, uh, here's the Y. Um, over about here is Mercy Hospital. Over here is the stairs 
that I was talking about, just about right here. So you got the Department of Human Services, East Canesville, the Y again, like I mentioned, their entrance exit right here. They have an entrance exit up here. So these folks, these kids leaving the Y are, as I understand it, I have not seen this, but as I've been told, these kids cross here and they go over to these stairs and then they walk up and they go to the restaurants. So um, what I want to point out now though is um, on Frank Street and Kingsville, you have the hospital here. If there's more congestion at this intersection, which I would expect because there's bond isn't taking the 559 cars per day, there's going to be 559 cars, more cars per day going here, here, here. It just makes sense, right? I mean, I believe. Um, so that traffic congestion at this intersection is going to slow things down getting to the hospital. Is it going to be 10 seconds? Is it going to be a minute? Is it going to be two minutes? I don't know. Nobody's done a study. Uh, I can tell you if somebody's had a stroke, the faster they get to the hospital, the better. Uh, an ambulance is going to get there. Okay, an ambulance is going to zip through and zip through, and if they can't get there, there's an accident here, they can't get through, they'll go back, um, I can't, I think it is Benton Street, there were Jimmy John's is, and they'll, they, they can divert over maybe to Jenny's if they have to. Okay, you're in a private car, when I was a kid, probably 18, I had to rush a little old lady to the hospital that worked at our drugstore, uh, and I was running red lights, I don't know if the statute of limitations has run out, but I admit it. Uh, if I would have got to this intersection and I would have been back here waiting, maybe for two lights, I would have been freaking out because I was a kid and I was scared because this lady was about ready to pass out. She was in pain. Uh, I don't know what, I didn't know if it was a heart attack. I don't think it was a heart attack because it was more in the belly area as opposed to the chest area. So um, I'm going to, I would. I'm 58, I'd probably still be freaking out if I got to that intersection and I can't get to the hospital. Uh, I'm backed up, There's maybe there's an accident, I don't want to say that, but if there is one, that could add problems. But I think the, pro the main problem is the everyday congestion that may be there, if you have to get to the hospital. I think, you know, I hope you don't. Um, there has not been a traffic study conducted by anybody. Um, I personally contacted two companies. There were two, no, no, I contacted three companies. There were conflicts. The first company did traffic studies for the city, so that wasn't going to work. The second company was named Wolfen. They do traffic studies for the for the Y, or maybe not traffic studies, but they do other work for the other work for the Y. And I, I don't know if it's traffic studies or other things. I, I honestly don't. But my understanding was they do conduct traffic studies, so I couldn't hire them. That was a conflict. The third company was could do it, but not in the time frame that they needed it to be done. They didn't have enough time to get it done. Uh, I did, and at that point, to be honest, everything moved pretty rapidly. Um, I don't know that a traffic study would help anybody at that point because things moved too fast. Um, I can't tell you if that was February, or I think it was probably February, but I honestly don't remember. Up until January 25th, I didn't even think about it because we had one at the, uh, in this room, actually, at the City Planning Commission, in this very room, they approved keeping Bond Street open, that it had benefit to the community. Um, the City Council said, yes, that street has benefit to the community on January 11th. You can, uh, you can watch, and I'm sorry, it wasn't January 11th, it was the one before that, right before the end of the year, I believe. Uh, January 11th is when they made the motion to reconsider. And so the 25th of January, I believe, was when the vote was taken that uh, to vacate bond, but I do. I was there. I sat there, and I did not hear anybody say that street has no benefit to anybody. I did not hear that, uh, and I think there were other people. And you can watch the video. And uh, I, I honestly, uh, I was there, uh, and I watched the video probably three or four times to be honest to see if I missed anything. And there was one thing I missed, and I might, I might get to that actually. Um, so at this point, what I'd like to say is. Uh, you know, can we just suspend Robert's rules? Everybody's following Robert's rules. I follow them when I'm in, you know, parliamentary procedure. Nobody understands it. You get up, you're out of order sometimes. It's confusing. You know, you can only make a motion to reconsider if you're on the prevailing side, uh, which is what, you know, Roger Sandow did. He was on the prevailing side, so he was able to do a motion to reconsider. 
uh, in our pharmacist association at our state level in, in Des Moines, when we go there, everybody knows Robert's rules, how to follow them, well, no. We don't know how to follow Robert's rules all the time. So we have a parliamentarian, just like the city council does, that would be Dick Wade, that kind of points out how you do this and how you do that. And people get up and they're out of order once in a while, and it's not like you're out of order, it's like, hey, you need to make this motion before you can get up and talk. Well, what I kind of like to do, and then we have once in a while where we suspend the rules, because we get to the point where nobody knows what, really what we're voting on, so we suspend the rules of the House, and then we say, this is what we really want to do, can we vote on it? Can we talk about this and vote on it? I guess at this point, in this process, it'd be great for me, in my opinion, for everybody, to throw out Robert's rules. I love Robert's rules. Everybody has to follow it, and it's a very systematic way of conducting a meeting. But we've gotten to the point where we're not talking to each other. We're not talking to our neighbors. We're not talking to our city council people. They can't talk to us. We can talk to them. They can't talk to us. If we had two city council members tonight, it would be awesome. We could talk, not argue. When the first time I went into the city council meeting, I said, you know, I've got respect for you guys. I still have respect. I just think they made a poor decision. This isn't a personal vendetta against anybody. I think they made a poor decision. I think the YMCA made a poor decision. They're, they're blaming our neighborhood for the decisions they made. They put the YMCA there. They had the parking problems. They've got the parking problems yet, three years maybe after they were built. They have the problem with the kids crossing the street. Those stairs were there way before the YMCA was there. Um, the problems that they have, we didn't create. If you're gonna build a however many million dollar facility, I would think that you would think that over before you put, oh, there's this problem, there's that problem. How can we solve that? Oh, there's neighbors over there that may not want us to close their street. You know, let's talk to them. Let's call them up and sit down and say, hey, can we have a cup of coffee and, and meet and talk? Didn't happen. And I'm not gonna rehash that, believe me. I could rehash a lot of things. So um, again, tonight I'm disappointed. I had hoped that some of the city, not city council members, that's not true. They have a city council meeting going on, as I understand, as, as we speak, um, unless it's over with. Uh, but I did hope that we have three or more advisory committee members uh, from the YMCA attend and just listen. They can't talk. Maybe they go back to their committee and say, hey, I went to this meeting and this is what, you know, what the neighbors had to say, I think that would have been productive. That would have been a step in the right direction. Um, but right now, everything has gone their way pretty much. And it's like, you know, why meet? Well, the reason you meet is to find solutions and get along with your neighbors. The YMCA is gonna be our neighbor for many years. And uh, I went for a walk yesterday with Tom, just around the neighborhood, and uh, people I had never met, uh, and people are upset. It's not just Tom and a few other people that are my neighbors, you know, next door neighbors. It's the pe people were, uh, uh, and it's people that work with me. Uh, there's a, a person here that works with me actually too. One's our technician doing the taping. I don't swear a lot, you know. And if one of the staff swears, uh, I kind of. Uh, say something to them that's not appropriate in our workplace. Well, the people yesterday were kind of swearing. Did you notice that, Tom? Oh, yes. Uh, they were even using words that, uh, boy, they weren't very polite. I know, Linda, you've never, never. sworn in your life. Never. And uh, you probably never even heard a swear word, ever, probably. Have you ever heard, been heard a swear word? No. no. And I'm, because you're a lady. You're a lady. I am. You're a lady. So, uh, but these people yesterday were just livid. Uh, I had a lady call me at the store Saturday and last week, and she's a little old lady. Well, she's not so little and so old, but she's, you know, and she is uh, using language that uh, may not be appropriate for uh, PG rated TV. Uh, so, anyway, people are upset, and we get that. Well, I hope the YMCA gets it. It's not directed so much at a person on the YMCA uh, advisory committee. It's more directed at this whole process, which we were not a part of. And we had every right we feel to be a part of because that's our neighborhood too. Um, I'd like to show, oh, and one thing I want to mention too, 
Bond Street and Canesville. I don't know, I'm going to throw out a, well, I'm going to ask, how many accidents do you think were at Bond Street and Canesville in the past five years? I don't know if anybody wants to throw out a number or two. Does anybody want to throw out a number? Linda? Bond Street and Canesville? Yes. Right where the Y is there. Is it kind of left turning? I don't right know. Turn? That's the thing. Yeah. I don't know. I requested that information. This was three or four months ago. First, the first question was how many accidents? Are there 50 or is there one? Um, so there, there's three. There were three accidents in the past five years. I've got that on an email from the city. Um, so I, I fired, no, I didn't fire back. I just sent another email. Okay, were those, um, somebody hit a kid? Were those, uh, you know, fender benders? Were they rear ends? You know, whatever. And they didn't send me back the statistics, but I don't think it was anything that, uh, you know, it wasn't like they're hiding the information. They just, uh, you know, you get a million emails a day and they just didn't respond. I think they would now. You know, nobody's talked about how many accidents are at Canesville and uh, Frank. I know I drive through there occasionally and sometimes I see the aftermath of accidents. There's glass and all kinds of things all over, all over here. So, and, and Harrison's over here. So I, I have to assume reasonably, I believe, that there's more accidents here and more accidents here on Harrison. Plus on Harrison and Keynesville, there's a red light camera. The reason the red light camera there is, is there probably because people are running the red light. Does that make sense? I think it does. Uh, so, if Bond closes, the traffic is going to be going over to Harrison if they want to turn left, if Frank Street's blocked or whatever, um, not that I don't want to say it's blocked, they can go here and turn left. If they go over to Benton Street, they can only turn right because that median's there, they can't turn left. So, when they go to Harrison, Harrison has a lot of little streets off of it. And Harrison's a long street and a very well-traveled, heavily traveled street. So you're going to see a lot of traffic coming down. Traffic is coming here on Benton Street. One thing I didn't like about Benton, you know, a few years ago when I used to take Benton because Bond was one street going north. Now it's two-way. But when Bond Street was one way going north, I took it home every night going back to my house. But when I went to work, I went over to Benton Street. Now, when I went to Benton Street, and I don't know this is the case, but at that time, there were cars on both sides, and it was really difficult to see. I'd, I'd edge out there into the, you know, I, I did not want to get hit. I don't want my trap, you know, my uh, insurance to go up. I don't want to have a fender bender. I don't think it would have killed anybody, but I think it would have been a fender bender. I don't know how fast these cars are going. But if you can't see people, you, know, you can't see them. Yeah, pretty fast. See, I don't take that street. I, I, well. I, I took it twice recently for a different reason. I saw somebody out in their front yard I wanted to talk to, so I, I went that way just to say hello to them. Um, so what I want to do now, I have to pull my note, I'm sorry. This is a diagram. Okay, this was February 8th, okay? Um, so what happened February 7th? Was February 7th was a Super Bowl. Okay, in the Super Bowl. And who was in the Super Bowl? One of the teams was Kansas City. And everybody in this area, most people follow Kansas City. They love Kansas City. Well, I have a friend in Kansas City. And I said, hey, I'm having this problem. Here's my problem. Can you solve it? You know what he said? Tony, today's the Super Bowl. I said, come on. Will you do me a favor? And he said, okay, I'm going to spend a half hour on it. And he's an architect. And he does stadiums and theaters, uh, movie theaters. And uh, so this is out of his league, to be honest. Uh, but, okay, I'm gonna give you a half hour. And then the next morning he spent a little bit more time putting the wording and stuff. So this is not a diagram that the YMCA would likely use, and I'm not trying to stand here and say, well, this is the best thing you guys could do. That's not the case. But if they had parking over here where the church was there all the way down, and if they put their green space over here, but this takes too much of their parking. That's the problem with this. It takes too much of their parking. When, when, what you add over here, you're going to lose over here. Okay. But 
The idea here is that there's other drawings, other ideas out there where they could have their green space and the other things that they want to have, their park. Um, it's the diagram they have now, which I think is better. The first diagram they had was um, the basketball court right next to Canesville. I, I, I don't know who came up with that. The architect friend I have, I'm not throwing out, this is his thought, not my thought, I don't know anything. He said, Tony, the reason they put that basketball court there, um, the basketball court right next to Canesville. I, I, I don't know who came up with that. The architect friend I have, I'm not throwing out, this is his thought, not my thought, I don't know anything. He said, Tony, the reason they put that basketball court there and the trees and all the other stuff was that way it looked like Bond Street had to close so that that park could be built there because that would be the only reason you would put a basketball court right next to a street that has thousands and thousands of cars going by at 45 miles an hour to speed them it's 35, uh, okay? Uh, you put a policeman right here, I think you're gonna catch a few people uh, going 45, if not more. Um, but, so he has a, so what he did was he said, um, the diagram shows that Bond can stay open and become central traffic spine to both parking areas. Rel relocate the, the planned green space to a quieter and more protected part of the site. No extra traffic on Harmony. Um, and ring the parking lots with greenery. I guess I guess ring is put the ring around it. Uh, add pedestrian controls. I think he's meaning over here. Of course, I do not know the full design of the program, but I think this or similar could be done. So what we, what we would do is just have the both parking lot entrances and exits located on Bond. Um, you'd have no direct entrance on Harmony. So there'd be no increased traffic up here, no exit on Harmony. You'd have a campus-like green space. It wouldn't be a closed campus, but it would be a campus-like green space that can take over a portion of the existing parking. But between the two lots, you have one pedestrian crossing with traffic controls, crosswalks, and possibly speed bumps. You would have a fence on either side, and you'd have a gate. And kids could cross back and forth, back and forth. The kids would not go down this way if those stairs were gone. They'd have no reason to go this way if the stairs were gone. I guess if they went this way, they could walk down over to the traffic lights, but they don't gain anything by crossing here and then going to the traffic lights. I, I don't see how they would, but they're kids. I, I don't know. But those stairs are gone, why cross here? It doesn't make sense. Um, let me see what else he put here. Strategically placed fencing or hedging that strongly encourages pedestrians to use the crosswalk only. Having green space away from Keynesville would be quieter and safer. So this is just one proposal that he, that he came up with uh, in a short period of time. What I did not bring tonight, and I, I would have, you know, I, the 712 initiative put together, to be honest, you know, they put this to shame, to be honest. They put together their proposals that were awesome. On a scale from one to 10, I think they were a 10. Um, they do an incredible job. I don't feel it's appropriate for me to be up here presenting their plans. I don't think they would mind. In fact, I, I, in fact, I think they even told me I could, but I don't know them well enough. I think this design only adds, I think if I did my math right, it only adds 13 parking spots. So it would be stupid, okay? Um, their designs add many more parking spots. The, the design the YMCA is using now adds 55 parking spots. And then you just have the one entrance and exit and you have all the other problems that we mentioned. So, um, I, I, you know, I think those are public documents. The other thing though, the 712 initiative did was they had, uh, they had worked up a budget and other things for saving St. Patrick Church. And I thought that was gonna be, that was a foregone conclusion that that was gone. But what I hear from the appropriate people is that St. Pat's could have been saved, it just couldn't have been saved for the use of the YMCA. It didn't fit in with what they wanted, but the structure could have been saved and it could have been used for other things repurposed, so to speak. I, I don't know if that would be apartments, I don't know if it would be a museum, but that was a beautiful structure. I drove by it every day, literally. I mean, and I mean literally every day, I drove by it, except on Sunday something, which is ironic because it's a church, you know? Isn't that kind of crazy? 
but I even went around Frank Street on, on, on Sundays sometimes. Because it, it was a church, but I was actually an usher at that church. Two sisters got married there. I understand the, uh, believe me, I understand how upset everybody was when I got torn down. Uh, had I known that there were other ideas out there, I would have got behind that group. But I believe there was no hope for the church. But when I saw, the, again, what the 712 initiative did, there was hope for that structure. But it did not meet the needs of the YMCA, is what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> so um, let me see if I have anything else, and I'm going to let somebody else get up here. And uh, I think I've done enough talking. Uh, another thing I did was I went to the uh, Better News Better Business Bureau website and just filed a complaint or a review of the YMCA. I'm not going to read everything because you all know how I feel, but I will read their response. Posted May 17th, which was last Monday, a week ago today. Um, this is their response. The YMCA looks forward to bringing, I'm sorry, the YMCA looks forward to bringing to fruition a new community park that will serve, serve both members and the community of Council Bluffs of Life complete with sports courts, walking trail, playground, pavilion, and more. In our attempts to create one cohesive campus for the safety of all, we recognize it has been a process. We have adhered to all guidelines and mandates through this process. I agree with probably everything they just said, including public meetings. I don't remember a public meeting. I wasn't invited. Were you invited? There were public hearings. And the public meetings may have been with their members. Those are public meetings. But I'm part of the public. I would have gone. I would have gone. I would have crossed the street. And I probably would have shaken their hands, to be honest. And said, hey, how are you? Let's talk about this. That didn't happen. I wasn't invited. I'm part of the public. OK, so the process, including public meetings and hearings, there were hearings, with the community. I'm part of the community. I wasn't there. And community leaders, city council and whoever else, I don't know. Uh, as the project progresses, there will be additional opportunities to express concerns and opinions. Hmm. I'll tell you what, the track record hasn't been so great, uh, which will be heard and respected, because that's one of the core values, respect. Uh, respect. Uh, by all parties involved. So I'm gonna reread that, because I can't interject. As the project progresses, there will be an additional, I'm sorry, will be additional opportunities to express concerns and opinions, which will be heard and respected by all parties involved. You heard me say respect, didn't you? I think I said respect. Um, this community park will allow the Y to serve our youth, members, active older adults, and more on an expanded and improved campus. That's great, but you know what? There's Bond Street right there. There's a lot of people that use that street. Do they ask us? No. Did they notify you? No. Who notified you? The city. If you live within 200 feet, you were notified. If you lived over here, well, I don't know exactly. Let's say over there, you weren't notified. Uh, and I'm going to, I might have to say, I think you get the point. If you live a little bit further, one direction or another, you weren't notified. Okay. They weren't legally required to. Okay, there's no legal obligation on the part of the YMCA to do that. None. Uh, so they didn't. I tell people walking in the store because everybody comes in talking about this, our pharmacy. And what do you think about this and that about the street? And I say, you know, the way I look at it, there's a there's an empty lot right across the street. If I was gonna build a car wash on that lot, the first thing I would do is talk to all you guys walking into the drugstore and say, Do you want a car wash there? Is it gonna bother not are you gonna use the car wash, but is it gonna bother you? Is that traffic and everything else going to bother you? Is it going to create a problem for the neighborhood? Uh, that didn't happen. We sent out postcards to 500 residences up around up Harrison, Logan, all the streets that aren't on this map diagram. Uh, and uh, many of them have replied to me. Many of them are angry. Many of them are frustrated. What can we do? Um, again, I don't want to rehash these things. I just kind of want to tell you. Uh, where we are. Uh, there was a public hearing here uh, back in uh, November. We won. The, that was the planning commission. We wind up the city council, the next meeting. Uh, they had another hearing on January 25th where we lost. That was the first time we lost that uh, nobody got notice on to my knowledge. It might have been in the paper, but 
It would have been nice if somebody would have sent a notice to the people within 200 feet, at least. And I, I wanted to get that ordinance changed. I'll be honest, that's something that's been on my mind a long time. I believe two things should happen. One of them should be that ordinance should be changed from 200 feet to 1,000 feet. If we would have had 1,000 feet, this wouldn't even be a discussion right now. All these people would have been at all those meetings. Furious. The other, well, I guess I had three ideas. The second thing was whoever wants to close the street needs to, they need to be responsible for notifying everybody, not the city. But it doesn't matter, you know, a thousand, you know, whoever notifies them, but I still think they should. And the other, the third thing, this was actually the second thing, but I kind of threw in that last thing about the YMCA should have contacted everybody. If the city contacted people in a thousand feet, who cares if it's the city or the Y? Let's throw that out. But if they want to close the street, they should be required to pay for a traffic study and prove not only to the neighbors, but to the citizens of Council Bluffs, many of whom use that street, not just the neighbors for my convenience. Uh, people use the street to get to a harmony to get to the doctor's building. For example, um, you know, I'm not sure I can give you 20 million reasons. Uh, uh, people use the street to get home from the doctor's buildings. People use the street to see family and friends up here. People use the street over and over and over. So uh, anyway, I do want to let other folks up here. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna mention is uh, the city, this is a statement that was in the uh, minutes of one of the meetings. The City Council approved the vacation of Bond Street on January 25th, 2021, after it was deemed to be of no benefit to the public interest. I'm interested. Uh, the comprehensive plan amendment, the rest of this is about rezoning. So uh, I'm not going to take questions at the moment unless you want me to. I'd like to turn it over to Tom. Uh, that might even prompt some more questions that you may have. So uh, Tom Boschka. Uh, is uh, the big shot at the Department of Human Services? Are you the CEO of the whole state? Or I, I mean, yeah, not in that capacity. Anymore. No, no, no. I'm not just teasing. Yeah. No, he's my neighbor. Tom yeah. is my neighbor, and uh, no, he's not here talking for the DHS. Um, well, Tony really did a very comprehensive overview, uh, but I just want to cover a few points, and I think one of the most important is that part of the law that says that before a street or some other kind of public uh, land can be given away it has to be shown to have no benefit to the public we didn't hear that word but maybe it was buried in the resolution what that wasn't read but um, we even heard some of the city council say yeah there was benefit to the public so it wasn't you know there's a little bit of benefit or not much benefit it is no benefit we believe that it does have benefit People are using it even as we speak, I'm sure, unless the barricades are going. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, I think that we also um, are concerned about is the convenience of having Bond Street open, but also the fact that if it gets closed, and it looks like that may happen, all of that traffic is going to be forced to uh, harmony. And that is going to create, I think, a significant um, danger to both uh, foot traffic and car traffic. Uh, and so safety of the community is at risk with all that traffic coming into basically a three or four block area. Because there's only going to be two unencumbered entrances, that is at Harrison and at Frank. You could get to it um, from Benton, but that's only if you're coming from the east because it's, it's a block. The other um, thing that was pointed out was that left turns are dangerous um, and it is a left turn off of um, Canesville to Vaughan, but there's also a left turn off of um, Canesville to Sims and all along there. And I think if you go on Broadway, even though there's traffic lights, there's a lot of left turns. So if that is kind of the standard, um, I guess we'd almost be making right turns around to get everywhere. Um, Tony pointed out that the plan would only uh, gain 55 spots. Um, and, you know, I'm not even sure that it, 
that the Y membership, though they probably like the amenities, and we all would like amenities of a nice park, etc., but they're really going to understand that they're only going to have that the, the entrance through Harmony. Right now, as uh, I think Tony pointed out by the self-study, close to 600 cars were counted going to Vaughan. So there is a way that that, um, that traffic is kind of spread out a little, a little more. Um, and I know the other part was, was um, safety issues. Right now, the only way to get to the Y without going to the parking lot is to come down those steps, I believe, on the east side of a frame. And those are quite a few steps. So if you're a, a person who has problems with steps or a handicap, um, that is an issue. So if, if safety was such a big concern, when did it become a concern? Apparently not during the planning. Um, the, other, the other thing is, you know, the drawings for the park, it really is what I call uh, kind of a postage site, a postage stamp size park. It's very small, 55 of those um, spots are going to be parking. You're going to have basketball, some play area, and a walking pack, which I think would take nine routes to get a mile. You'd probably be dizzy by the time you get done. Um, the other thing is that uh, Mercy is offering or has offered uh, I think about 155 spots after hours and in the evening um, and, uh, and uh, on the weekends which really is much more than the 55 that are being gained and you'd have to cross frame but there is a way to mitigate some of those issues there and have the um, uh, members encouraged to take that um, there was, as Tony said, no real input from the neighbors. Um, you know, they had asked me to be on a group and I, I went to two meetings. Really none of the ideas that I had presented were uh, incorporated uh, of a significant nature. I felt that it was kind of a, like window dressing, so I absented myself. So, Tom, were those ideas, was that committee meeting after they decided to close Bond Street or before? Oh, no, it was, it was after. After they decided to yeah. close Bond, they invited you to the meeting. Right, right. I think it was as a result of those. those uh, Did they contact you before they closed no, Bond? No. Would you have gone and met with them if they contacted you before they closed Bond? You know, I might have, but I, you know, really, I, I couldn't say for sure because yeah, yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I think that we've got to really acknowledge Tony's leadership in this. He talked about leadership a lot. And clearly he has been spearheading this and has done a, a, a great job. Um, and I just think that, um, it, you know, if, if people contact their city council people in the mayor and say, you know, how can you say there is no benefit to the public? Not that there is some benefit, maybe not a lot of benefit, but it's used all the time. Uh, it's convenient, uh, but even more importantly for me is the safety issue of, of having all that traffic put through a, a Harmony Street. Um, and I know I live on it, so I've got a personal interest in, but beyond that, um, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense in a public policy standpoint. So, thank you. Thank you, Tom. And then, can you say no. Ted, did you want to say anything? Sure. Would you, uh, I don't know, are you able to turn the camera? Okay, Ted, she's going to turn the camera there for you. Are you able to pick up the sound too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ted Gray, community member, used to work with neighbor for years in the 80s. My take on it is the YMCA is fully in the same room. I don't like it. I don't think the public would like it. They knew all the facts and the neighbor is our number one in this city. No matter where you live, everybody's paying property taxes. The YMCA is paying no property taxes. 
So to me, it doesn't seem fair. They should be able to go their way into this neighborhood. They were put there by the community. Long Street never did one thing to them. And the process of thinking is to do this is incredibly outrageous. That's my take. Okay. Well, we're right. Uh, I mean, you're, you're right in about 50 minutes. I guess I thought we might go about an hour, so we're right about ready to wrap up. Uh, I guess kind of in closing, um, I think I could. I think I've attended probably three to four hundred committee meetings and board meetings in my life. Um, I've been president of our pharmacist association for 30 of the past 35 years. Uh, this might get some other people ticked off, but I told uh, somebody today that I think we. I think many people in the state of Iowa know that we have the second best pharmacist association in the state. I'm very proud of that. The best association is our state association. They have secretaries, they have lawyers, they got lobbyists, they got everything. We're never going to be there. But we have a great organization. I'm proud of it. Very proud of it. I'm very proud to serve with those people. When we meet, we don't argue. We sit there and talk. If somebody comes up with an idea that's mediocre, we try to make it better. You know, you sit down with people and you discuss things. You don't sit down and discuss things with them, you're going to create animosity. You know, you get home at night, you turn on the TV, everybody in the world is fighting everybody right now. I got this going on on my street. All I got to do, it's crazy. This is a crazy, crazy situation. If you would have just put a fence, take five minutes, put a fence in a crosswalk. Who is going to get mad about that? That's a 30-minute conversation. If that, boy, who's going to pay for the fence? I think the Y should. Uh, what color is the fence? I don't care how tall. But well, I'd want to make it tall enough so kids, well, yeah, I'm tall enough so kids don't climb it and go over it, of course. But that's a 30-minute, maybe one-hour conversation. I don't think even that. This thing would have been over with in... Uh, Let's see, they started planning on this 2019, then 2020, and then October 25th, roughly, is when we found out. So they had a two year start on us, or a year and a half start on us. We didn't know what was going on until everything was in place, to be honest. Uh, so we didn't have even a chance to do research. This is seven months of research and a lot of headaches. I don't mind doing it. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I don't want to say another thing. Somebody came in the store today from, uh, they were up in South Dakota traveling for the Jarvis TV up in South Dakota. I said, Are you serious? And it's all oh, we tuned into one of the Omaha channels on the internet. Oh, okay. You know, I'm not trying to run the cameras trying to promote myself or try to promote my business. I'm trying to promote my neighborhood, I'm trying to promote my community. I do not want to sue. The last thing I want to do is sue Council Bluffs, Iowa, or the City Council. I love my hometown. I've lived here 58 years. It's ironic, but I don't know my pointer here. I was born, I don't know, right around, right there maybe, in the Charles Lake, what's now the Charles Lake and YMCA. That was Mercy Hospital. I went to church where the church was. You were probably baptized there. I was probably baptized there. So, uh, I didn't cry when I was baptized. I was the best baby they ever had. I got a, they got a plaque for me. I, I did such a good job. And, uh, but this was the last thing I wanted to do. But we tried everything. And I mean everything. Is there anything we didn't try? I mean, so talk to the city council. We city council, city mayor. planning commission, the mayor, everybody. Emails, emails, emails. Finally, we got an attorney. And it's like, I didn't want an attorney. Not, I love my attorney. But I didn't want an attorney. I didn't, why do I need an attorney? I want to go to work and fill prescriptions, take care of my patients. And by the way, they're patients, they're not customers. We're healthcare providers, we take care of our patients. Any pharmacist is going to tell you that. Um, so I don't want to, people to think Tony's running to the camera again, but we got to get our word out. We got to get our message out because people need to know what's happening. And this is the only way we can do it. Um, I, believe me, I know other pharmacists in a, in, around the state and around the country and around other places that would love to be in front of a camera 24-7. They Every time there's, don't get between them and a camera because you're going to get knocked over. That's not me. Uh, I've been very 
quiet in Council Bluffs. I doubt anybody's ever heard of me except for my patients. Uh, so this is out of the norm for me. I'd rather be at a, my, my favorite place to be is at work, my, which is, a lot of people think it's crazy, but it is. My second favorite place is to be in a boardroom with pharmacists, but I'd be in a boardroom with anybody and be comfortable uh, if they invited me. I would be there, I promise, and I think you all know that I would be. So with that, we're gonna post this on the internet so people can watch it, um, and uh, we, we would like to have a general public forum like this where people can ask questions that don't really know what's going on. A lot of us do know what's going on because we've been a part of it. But, um, you know, the video is going to be out there. We hope people view it. Of course, it's probably not going to get as many hits as some cat crawling around a, a piano keyboard, I suppose. But maybe the people in Council will also watch it. I don't know. But um, we'd like to do another forum for the general public if they're interested. And we'd love to take questions. We want to have a dialogue. We're not afraid of having a dialogue with anybody. We're very proud of the work we've done. We're very proud of our neighborhood. I love my neighborhood. When I saw my condominium, the first time I walked into it, I said, that's where I want to live. And uh, my neighbors have been great. I've got to know them so much better. Uh, good people. And they don't need they don't deserve to be treated the way we've been treated. So with that, uh, thank you all for being here, the few of you that are, and uh, you have a good night, and, uh, and uh, travel safe. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for you, Mark. The neighbor has been remarked. You guys, could you hear me, George? Could you hear it very well? <laughs> I've got an appointment in the morning to try and do a better job. Yeah, yeah. I, I miss a lot. I know. <laughs>